Hi, this is Jeff Fisher, the voice of Aid in Final Fantasy Type-0 HD, and you're listening to Final Fantasy Union. And welcome to another special edition of the Final Fantasy Union podcast to celebrate the release of Final Fantasy Type-0 HD. I'm your host, Lauren, and I'm here again with Dan from Square Enix. Hello. And Jeff Fisher. Hello. Hello. How are you, Lauren? Dan, how you guys? <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. It's quite sunny today, actually. Yeah. Quite a, quite a change. A rare me. treat. Yes. <laughs> That's nice for England. Yeah, I've been over a few times. I think I've had one day of sun, but it was, it was fantastic. That is I love it either way. Lucky. Yeah, I was going to say, that's better than the average. I know. <laughs> um, of course, Jeff plays 8 in Final Fantasy Type-0 HD, and he's been involved with numerous voice acting roles, including a previous Final Fantasy game. He played huge in Final Fantasy 13 and 13-2, and he also has a cult role on American Dad playing dot, dot, dot. Jeff Fisher. <laughs> That's right. The dots are important. Yes, the dots are very <laughs> mm-hmm. important. Uh, beautifully done. Uh, thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> However, before we dive into our questions, I'd like to remind everyone that Final Fantasy Union is part of the podcast series called Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts Union, and we're presented by the Gaming Union Network and Square Enix. It comes out on the iTunes store, FinalFantasyUnion.com, and YouTube.com forward slash FFUnionVids. So that's two named Final Fantasy characters that you have under your belt, and that must feel pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's it's a pretty wild. Um, I I was excited to do the first one, and Yuge was a really fun character to play. And when I when I read for this, you know, they always have these code names, and you don't know that you're really reading for a Final Fantasy thing. <laughs> and so when I booked it. I was recording and it was a totally different name. I think they were calling it Yellow P, <laughs> not spelled out, just a, a letter P. And I, was, I kept wondering, like, what really is this? And finally, I think it was the second session. They were like, yeah, it's Final Fantasy. It's like, oh, and I was so I was really excited, actually. I was I was very excited. <laughs> That's so crazy, though, to just go into the booth and, like, not even know. Like, Yellow P. <laughs> yes. How do you even tell I know, people that? St- You're just like, I play Yellow P. <laughs> It's really funny, isn't it? I, I just was like, I this cannot be the real game, but nobody was telling me otherwise. It was so funny. They just didn't trust you. Yeah, obviously. I'm not trustable. And every time you look at a game now, all you can see instead of the title, it's just going to say Yellow P. You know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I just kept thinking of, you know, when I used to grow up in St. Louis in the, in the snow and... You know, I know what yellow pea is. <laughs> oh, yeah, you stay away from that stuff. That's right. Yeah, you, dodge, you don't need it. Dodge that for like, no yellow like, snow. No yellow it. snow. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I guess after two Final Fantasy games, um, are you going to be working? I guess, as you just mentioned, you never know what you're working for. But would you like to work on, you know, a third, make it three for three? As it sounds like you must be a big fan. Yes, I am a big fan. I think it's an incredible, uh, an incredible series. And yes, I, w- I would be thrilled to do it. I absolutely. In a heartbeat. All right. Well, this next one is from Demo Vaman, who asks, moving on to Type-0 HD, what was your reaction when you heard the news that you'd be returning to voice in another Final Fantasy game? Well, when I, when I did hear, uh, when I was in the studio, yeah, I kind of was taken aback. And I, I just thought, wow, this is amazing. And, and to uh, play a different character in a different you know, series of it. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was really exciting. And um, yeah, I, I, I still, I just can't believe it. I feel very, very fortunate. I mean, what's it actually like? I guess Final Fantasy is different from other franchises in that, you know, because every game is different and has a different cast. Did you ever think like, oh, I've been in one, it'll never happen again, or they'll never call the same actor back? Did, did that go through your mind, or is it like you're always thinking, oh, maybe, this might be a chance? You know, I, I, I thought most likely they probably wouldn't use me in anything, but, you know, the beauty of being a voice actor and being able to you know, get a lot of different characters is you end up doing a lot of different shows and playing different roles all the time. So it's it's always possible. You never think it's going to happen. You hope it does. But uh, yeah, it's always a possibility for sure. Um, and, and the more versatile the actor is, the more they do end up in the same game as different people all the time or, you know, multiple franchises of the same game playing different guys. 
I'm not saying I'm that versatile. I feel <laughs> really lucky that, that I got like I got I got another character. Let's put it that way. Cool. Actually, speaking of eights, um, he's really unique in Type Zero HD because he's the only character who refuses to use weapons. Is that an aspect you admire about him? Yes, absolutely. I thought I thought it was super cool that uh, that he doesn't use weapons. That he fights with his hands and his feet, and he's still you know so tough. And yes, I, I, I love that. You know, it, it takes me back to, you know, Bruce Lee and all those great, you know, karate movies back in the day. So I, I love it. I love that aspect of him. Perhaps an odd question, but um, would your approach to playing eight have changed if he used a weapon? Um, I, you know, I think for eight, he's so he has such high morals. I think it would be an inner struggle for him to pick up a weapon. So yes, I think it would it would definitely change the approach as far as you know how I would think about the character uh, in the future if that if that became the case. Yeah, I I could say playing the game, I could never see him actually you know pick up a weapon. Not that he'd ever need yeah. it. He's such a badass. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I I don't see him doing it either. But you know, it's possible. I just find it very hard to believe something would have to push him over the edge. And I, I, I don't know like what his mental state would be at that point. It could be a very different a different journey he would be on. That actually kind of segues quite nicely into our next question by Ellis Grimm Maxime. Um, did your opinion of Eight change as you went through the recording process? So as you, you know, as the character develops, I guess, and naturally through the narrative, did you sort of like kind of change your opinion of him or your approach to playing as him? Uh, yeah, I think as you know, you record these games. You know, you're you're getting so little information in in little chunks as as each session happens. So you have a take on what you think is going on and how he how he is. But then the more you get into the game and as, in the story, you know, you, you, these characters I think are really well written and they're really fleshed out uh, emotionally. And so yes, I think uh, as you go along, it was it was much a much deeper than I was. Um, anticipating emotionally and his connection to the other characters in the game so yeah it does change and you know you rely on the director a lot and bob uh who i was working with is you know a phenomenal director so you know bob buckholt so as you as you go through you know you really rely on him to kind of guide you and and uh and and on that journey so yeah it was it was much uh it was much more intense than i was expecting to be honest sure um, this next one is from Zero Forte, who asks, which did you have more fun voicing, video game characters or cartoon characters? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. You know, it, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to say. You know, every job is, is different. And some are more in my wheelhouse and uh, I don't stretch as far. And then some, you know, you're speaking gibberish and you're an alien and, you, you know, so... Every job is fun. It, it's just always different. Some jobs are more technically driven, which I find video games to be mm. a little more technical. And I find animation to be a little looser. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, we're recording before they've, they've done the animation. Yeah. So I'm able to Im- improv a lot more. And I, I don't do that so much on, the, on video games. It's hard because, you know, you don't know the whole story. I don't have the whole script. And so it's a little more it's a little more limiting. So I, I yeah, I think animation in general is just I guess you could say it's it's more they're both amazing jobs. I mean anything in the business is is great, you know, when you're working it's a it's a it's a thrill. But I mean I, honestly animation has a lot more freedom. Yeah, definitely. I guess also you don't have to do all those um hoo ha and all those like sort of fight things when you're in uh cartoons and stuff. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Although, you know, I think my character Jeff Fisher has been killed or beaten up plenty of times. I've I've actually I've actually those video games do help with all that. They're they're great. It's great learning for great all, learning all experience. that stuff. Must be tough for sure. Must be tough doing those lines like take after take. Like, oh you do make it sound a little bit more like you got hit in the gut more than you got hit in the chest. Yeah. Like, uh okay. Yeah, it, it it's it's great, you know. I actually love it. Um I love the specificity of it, you know, and it's it's a big difference. Like, you know, you like where did I where did I get hit? Is it the shoulder? Is it what did I get hit in the stomach? Like all that affects how you're gonna say the next line how hurt am i and that's where you rely on the director and yeah i mean i i find it fascinating you know to be able to try to try to uh 
to portray what's happening in those scenes. Even though they're grunts, they definitely have meaning behind them. I, at least hopefully people get it. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Zero Forte also wanted to add that um, they were looking forward to uh, your return on American Dad. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We have, uh, I don't know how much I can, you know, say about it, but uh, it is a, it's an amazing uh, return. It's one of the best episodes in 11 years that we've ever uh recorded and and there's some funny 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 episodes coming up i think the writing is probably the best it's ever been and it's so creative and it's so out there i <laughs> every time i get it get the new script i literally am in tears <laughs> i'm just laughing out loud so it's it's a real blast to be able to do it i, I i'm glad it's continuing we'll see what happens Jeez, 11 years oh, no. I know, crazy. I know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's super crazy. Playing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, play, playing a version of myself. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, it's certainly me. <laughs> it's certainly me. Cool, so moving back to Type Zero HD, Ninja Sheik yes. asks, what was your favorite scene to record in the game? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I think the relationship scenes between, you know, me and, me and Cater... Um, you know these these emotional, more emotionally connected scenes. I mean, these these characters are facing some heavy uh, losses in their lives, and and to really connect with these other characters, I think those were the scenes that I really that stand out in my mind. I mean, you know, there were so many really great scenes and and action sequences in this in this game, but uh, I think it's those emotional connections between the two, the characters, and especially with Cater and I and. Yeah, I found it. Uh, it was it was really it was really f cinematic to me when we were when we were recording those. Did you see like the relation? Did you see Kato and Eight as as a thing? I mean, because they're, as personality wise, you know, they're very quite different. You know, Eight is quite total quite opposite. Serious, yeah, yeah. Kato is quite aloof and very sarky. Is that was that kind of yes. like a, oh was it yeah actually yeah was it a case of opposites attract or was it a, do you think there was something more to it? No, I do. I think. It's a case of opposites attract, and yeah, I, I it was uh, it was a really great take on on those two. I thought it was very very interesting. I thought it was really compelling, you know, that, that they could be so opposite. But um, I think that happens a lot in real life as well. So I, I found it to be pretty spot on. Ah, uh, young love, Aww, teenagers, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so getting back to American Dad. What is it like to be Jeff Fisher? <laughs> oh, wow. You know, it, it's it's a blast. I mean, it, you know, these guys know me really well. So they, they write based on kind of a lot of things that I actually have done or do in my life. And sometimes the writers, will, they'll just call me and ask me what I'm doing. And I'll be like, oh, I'm eating a fish taco in Malibu. And then They'll write a whole episode about my character, like going down to Mexico to find this guy that makes these legendary burritos and he injects sour cream into each bean. And, you know, and uh, they just take little aspects of what I tell them every once in a while and they just write these crazy episodes. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's hilarious. It, it's fantastic. I mean, I feel so lucky to be able to continue playing that character. And, you know, now Haley and I are married and. So I'm the son-in-law in the family, and it's it's just great. The reaction between uh, Stan and I is always just so um, opposite, and it causes so much turmoil. And I think it just it's really great for the show. Yeah, definitely. How did that even like come about? Were they just like, okay, so um, we want to make you into a character? Um, how do you feel? <laughs> using your real name. Yeah. Yeah, using your real name as well. Yeah, I, they were writing that show. They were, you know, my friends uh, Seth and Mike and Matt, who were all, you know, on Family Guy and the executive producers on Family Guy, and they had created this new show, and they said, hey, we want you to be in it, and I was thrilled, and I thought I was going to play the son, oh, and okay. they said, no, 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 we have, we have another idea, and Seth... Uh, you know, wants to name him Jeff Fisher. And I was like, wow, wow what? <laughs> and so they sent me the pilot and I read it and I was like, I, I think I had two lines mm -hmm. and it was perfect. It was something of, uh, with Shakespeare, if I can remember correctly. It's so long ago. But I say uh, something like, you know, you know what Shakespeare said? I don't, but but I'm sure you do. And then I like leave out the bedroom window or something. <laughs> but it was just so funny. And I thought... 
wow, this is great. And so they said, yeah, you know, would you like to do it? I'm like, of course, my God, yeah. you know. And then they said, well, there's one catch. And I was like, okay. And they said, well, the network is going to make you test. And I said, oh, oh, okay. And they said, well, you know, just so you know, they're bringing in a lot of celebrities. Mm. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, to play you. And I said, <laughs> wow, okay. Oh I said, well, God. listen, man, I get it. I've been through this before. I said, you guys just have to promise me, you know, if I don't get this, because I wasn't confident that I was going to end up doing it. Yeah. Um, and, and I knew these guys wanted me to, but, you know, the network is a whole different deal. Yeah. And I said, just promise me that if I don't get it, you will change the name. And they said, absolutely. So I, I think I would have uh, been very, very depressed for years to have had somebody been playing Jeff Fisher other than me. So luckily it worked out and it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun <laughs> and it's just what, it's a wild ride. You know, it really has been. Yeah. Well, I think we've got time for one more question from uh, Rathquin Maxime again. Um, what was your favorite part about recording eight from Final Fantasy type zero HD? I don't, you know, I just think eight is such a cool, like, serious focused guy and it was just it was just so fun to play a version of that it's an incredible franchise to be able to work on and so honestly the whole thing was just a great ride like every recording session i was always excited to go and um and go work and so it's hard but looking back at it over this you know it's been a minute since it's been since it's been happening so it was just it was just a blast. I mean, honestly, it was a lot of I learned a lot by working on it. So it was it was just a it was just a great, great experience all the way around. Cool. Can you see yourself in eight at all? I mean, was there a lot of his personality that you could relate to personally? I mean, I wish I could say yes. Um, I, I, I learned a lot from him. We're very different, um, but uh, we're both driven. For sure. But he he is. He, I mean, you know, listen, I can't fight to save my life. And he's <laughs> such a tough He's so tough. I mean, I would love to be able to like just pull a few moves that he has. But um, but no, I mean, you know, you try to find what you can in these characters that brings out pieces of you. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I do find aspects of him uh, for sure. But uh, but, you know, the beauty of playing these great characters is to kind of get lost in them. And so as much as like I want all these to be a lot like him, I, I think we're a lot different, you know. I think I worry a lot more. <laughs> I have a lot more issues. Ah, uh, yeah. He's he's much more determined and focused, and really, really, you know, he's collected. And he's just a he's a, he was an awesome character. I hope people enjoy it. You know, I really do. Well, you definitely have a fan in Dan. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's my he's my main. I love I love playing a date, and I love him as a character. So um, yeah, I hope that's I, very nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I I agree with you. I hope other people listening uh, agree with us and yeah. use him in the game yeah definitely that would be fantastic you know it's uh it's always great to 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 be able to do these and and for people to enjoy it and that's why we all do it so it's nice to uh for people to uh have fun and i hope i hope they love it well thank you so much again for taking the time to speak to us jeff you're welcome lauren <laughs> thank you dan it's been a it's been a pleasure yeah, thank you be sure to check back with us in the future as we have more Type Zero HD interviews coming out in the future. And yeah, that's it. All right. Well, listen, have uh, have a nice weekend, y'all.